Good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. Today I would like to look at the work of Marguerite Poret. I don't know if you have heard of her because, well, I hadn't until a few days ago. And um, she was born in, in 1250, which is a seriously long time ago, and so it's not surprising that many of us would not have heard of her. And she was a Beguine. She was a, a member of a group of women who were particularly focused on prayer and wrote about prayer. And she was the author of a book called The Mirror of Simple Souls. And this book was mostly around experiencing the love of God. But it didn't go down too well. And in 1306, the church authorities took her books and burnt them in the village square. But obviously that wasn't enough because in 1310 they burnt her. They burnt her at the stake. And it is said that probably it was because she wrote not in Latin but in the vernacular and the church was opposed to that. And what she writes about is spiritual growth and, and she describes seven stages which are quite interesting. The first stage, she says, is keeping the commandments. And, and I see it as a, as a beginning stage, and we've all been there, that place where you suddenly become aware that God is calling and touching your life and setting you apart. And you strive to, to keep his commandments to the best of your ability. And there's more of a a master-slave relationship, a sense of striving to win the favor of God. And she said to those who are, who are still in the stage, not to lose heart, but to, to work at growing spiritually, um, to not allow fear to deflect you from your spiritual path. The second stage is where the soul sees what counsel God gives those who would love him in a special way, beyond just the routine keeping of commandments. The soul wishes to please her beloved, her beloved Lord, and so sets out to follow his counsel by despising materialism and honours according to the example of Jesus. There is no bitterness in this, but she is sustained by the knowledge that God is leading her onward and upward. And then we get the third stage. Now she looks at her progress and all the good things that she does, and she realizes there is nothing she can offer her beloved Lord except what he most desires. And she sees that her will is attached to all those good things she is doing, all the spiritual comforts that she enjoys. And then she realizes she must let go of her attachment to being seen as one who does good. Now she feels the call to abstain from all good works that make her feel good, even proud. Now she seeks only to do not her will, but the will of others, and refuses all inclination to her own desires in order to destroy her own will. And she says that this is a very, very difficult process. It's the beginning of full surrender to God. But by shattering her ego, she creates a space where love can come in to live in her. Where God can come in to live in her. She takes on the will of others to free herself from her own will. 
Then we get to stage four. The soul now delights in meditation alone. Now this is all she does, and it is in this space that she delights. Utterly delights in God's abundant love for her. She shares her deep secrets, the deep secrets of her heart with God, And all her love for him melts into the embrace of union. Now God's love becomes her central pleasure and purpose. Then stage five. Now she sees what God is. That he is. Capital I is. All things come from him and she She is nothing. She feels an amazing humility that God's divine goodness is poured into her soul and that she now has free will. But her will is only to be where God is. Her own will is now entirely the same as God's will. There is no conflict of will at all. She is completely free. In stage six, God sees himself in her through his own power. He enlightens her so that nothing else exists except God, the source of all being. What is, is God. And the soul sees nothing but God. The soul is now free. The soul is in God and God is in the soul. There is nothing but God. All is in the being of God. And the seventh stage is a stage that cannot be described and can only be experienced after death. Now, what does Richard Foster have to say? He says, Frankly, I have never experienced anything, even remotely close to what is described in this reading. You may have much the same feeling. If so, is there anything from these writings that we can apply to ourselves? Simply this. God loves to love us far beyond our most extravagant hopes. At the very heart of the universe is God's utter compassion and loving care for all of his creation. No doubt many of us today find this hard to imagine. And even now, God delights to lead us into the dizzying heights of love to the extent that we welcome it, and to the extent that we can stand it. As you consider your own spiritual journey today, remember that you are growing into a greater and greater understanding that you are utterly adored by God. Utterly May you be blessed today.